We're going to start off by reading our questions first. We're on week 10 Thursday. Our story is the town mouse and the country mouse. Question number one says the word fair as used in the story means blank. So whenever we see that word in the story, we want to slow down, pay attention to it, see what's happening. Number two, what is the best clue to the meaning of the word mastiffs? So again, we have another word that we might not know the meaning of. We want to make sure that we slow down when we see that word, see what's going on, see if we can figure out what that word means. Number three, what is the best summary of the story? But remember, a summary needs to tell all the important things that happened in the story. It needs to start from the beginning of the story and go all the way to the end of the story. Number four, what is the genre of the text? So what kind of story is it? And then what is your evidence for your answer? Let's go ahead and read our story. Town Mouse and the Country Mouse. A town mouse, sorry, a town mouse once went on a visit to his cousin in the country. The country mouse made his cousin heartily welcome. Beans and bacon, cheese and bread were all he had to sorry, all he had to offer. But he offered them freely. The town mouse rather turned up his long nose at this country fair, and said, I cannot understand, cousin. How you can put up with such poor food as this? But of course, you cannot expect anything better in the country. Come with me, and I will show you how to live. When you have been in town a week, you will wonder how you could ever have lived a country life. So the two mice set off for the town and arrived at the residence of the town mouse. You will want some refreshment after our long journey, said the polite town mouse and took his friend into a grand dining room. They were found, there they found the remains of a fine feast, and soon the two mice were eating up jellies and cakes and all that was nice. Suddenly they heard growling and barking. What is that? said the country mouse. It is only the dogs of the house, answered the town cousin. Just at that moment, the door flew open. In came two huge mastiffs, and the two mice had to scamper down and run off. Goodbye, cousin, said the country mouse. What? Going so soon, said the other. Yes, he replied. Better beans and bacon in peace than cakes and steak in fear. So now let's look at these questions. The word fair, as used in the story, means A. Festival B. Food C. Mouse or D. Country Who thinks they know what the best answer choice is? A, B, C, or D. Haley, what do you think? A. A, festival. Okay, remember, with these kinds of questions, the best way to kind of figure out if we have the, um, the right answer or the best answer is to go ahead and take our answer choice and put it into the story wherever we find the word. So, Kaylee, what paragraph do they use the word fair? Where, which paragraph can I find that, uh, that word in? The first paragraph. Okay, the first paragraph. I'm going to read through the first paragraph. I'm going to find where I see the word fair. And then wherever I find it, I'm going to try to replace it with answer choice A. And we'll see if it still makes sense. So if I look carefully, I see fair underlined here. Go ahead and put my arrow. The town mouse rather turned up his long nose at this country fair and said, I cannot understand, cousin, how you put up with such poor food as this, but of course you cannot expect anything better. Mr. Romero? Yes, sir. The box and uh, the dog and his bone went away. Okay, hang on. I'll, I'll look at it for you. So let's try. You said A, right, Kaylee? Okay, let's try it out. 
The town mouse rather turned up his long nose at this country festival and said, I cannot understand, cousin, how you put up with such poor food as this, but of course you cannot expect anything better in the... What is a festival? Who can tell me what's a festival? Violet, what's a festival? A festival is like where people go to, where people celebrate and they have food and games. Okay, so it's like a, it's a place where they go to celebrate. It's like a big party, right? Okay. Were they having a party here? No, there wasn't really a party going on. So I don't think I can choose festival here. That leaves me with answer choice B, answer choice C, and answer choice D. Noah, what do you think? Which answer choice do you think works out the best? Answer choice B. Okay, let's try it. The town mouse rather turned up his long nose at this country food and said, I cannot understand, cousin, how you put up with such poor food as this. But of course, you cannot expect anything better in the country. I think that one sounds good, Noah. And Another clue I have is right here. When he's talking to his cousin, he says, how can you put up with such poor food? So the, the town mouse was like upset that all they had to eat or that all he had to eat was the bacon, the beans, the cheese, and the bread. He thought, oh, this isn't fancy food. This is regular boring food. I can't eat just regular boring food. I have to have fancy food. Answer choice B is the best answer choice here. Question two is very similar. It says, what is the best clue to the meaning of the word mastiffs? Now, it's not exactly the same. This time, instead of asking us, what does the word mastiffs mean? They ask us, what is the clue that lets us know what it means? Christopher, what do you think? Answer choice A is dogs, answer choice B is house, answer choice C is two mice, and answer choice D is beans and bacon. Which one of those words gives us a clue what mastiffs is? A. A, dogs. Okay, where do you find the clue, Christopher? What paragraph? We find it in paragraph one, paragraph two, or paragraph three. Paragraph two. Paragraph two. Okay, so here's mastiffs. In came two huge mastiffs, and the two mice had to scamper down and run off. Usually, if you're going to find a clue, you need to look either in the part of the story just before it, so like the sentence or two in front of it, or the sentence or two after it. I see that the paragraph ends right here. So let me look in front of it. Um, so the sentence before says, just at that moment, the door flew open. Okay, no clues there. Uh, and the sentence before that, it says, it is only the dogs of the house, answered the town cut. And then it says, two huge mastiffs came in. So they say dogs, we know there's more than one, and then it says two. So there's a pretty big clue about what mastiffs are. Right. If I use that clue, I can figure out that mastiffs are a kind of dog. Okay, number three, what is the best summary of the story? So we need something that tells us all the important parts of the story from the beginning to the middle. A says, a town mouse visited his cousin in the country and was served poor food. He took his cousin back home to the city and they ate delicious fancy foods such as jellies and cakes. Suddenly they heard growling and barking. B, a country mouse, served his city cousin plain food. Neither mouse liked the plain food, so they prepared jellies and cakes. The dogs chased them away. Answer choice C says, a town mouse invited the country mouse into town for a fine feast. When the dogs chased the mice, the country mouse returned to his peaceful home, even though the food was not as good. We don't have an answer choice D for this one. Who can tell me 
which one of those answer choices gives me all the important things from the beginning, the middle, and the end of the Violet, what do you think? A, B, C. I think A. A. A town mouse visited his cousin in the country and was served poor food. He took his cousin back home to the city and they ate delicious fancy food, such as jellies and cakes. Suddenly, they heard growling and barking. I think answer choice A has a lot of very important parts. The one thing I don't know if it has is, look at this last paragraph, the end of our story. What happens in the last paragraph, Violet? The city, the town, the country mouse leaves. He leaves. Why does he leave? Because the city, because the city is too, too, um, too kind of scary for him because okay. of those dumb to leave. That's a good way to describe it. The city is too scary. There's too much stuff that, that can happen to him. So he leaves. Does answer choice A talk about him leaving? It's missing from answer A, right? I have to remember that my, my summary has to talk about the whole story all the way to the end. And if the end of the story is that the country mouse leaves, and my summary has to say that he leaves. So I need to pick an answer choice that tells me about the, 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 sorry, not the city mouse leaving, but the country mouse leaving. So who can find an answer choice for me that talks about the country mouse leaving? Kylie, do you see it? Do you see an answer choice that talks about the country mouse leaving? Uh, me? Mm -hmm. they just C. Answer choice C. The town mouse invited the country mouse into town for a fine feast. When the dogs chased the mice, the country mouse returned to his peaceful home, even though the food was not. So answer choice C talks about him leaving. And I like that it also talks about what Violet said, that the country mouse decides to leave because it was a little bit too scary being in the city. Answer choice C, I think, is the best summary of this story. Okay, number four. What is the genre of this text? What kind of story is it? Now this one, we could put a couple of answers for genre. What kind of story is it? We uh. could either put fantasy, because this is a completely made up story that can't happen in real life. Or we could put a fable. Because fables also are completely made up stories. But what fables do is fables try to teach us a lesson. So I think this one does try to teach us a lesson here. So I'm going to put a fable. What is the evidence for your answer? So again, fables are made up stories that try to teach us a lesson. What lesson do you think that they're trying to teach us? Jadine, what lesson do you think they're trying to teach us? To never take someone from their home and just let them be. I don't know, because at first it was going okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if it's to never take someone from their home, but I like that you thought about that. So, Jadine, what happens when, when the, the country mouse leaves his home? He goes to the city, and what happens? He, the dogs come. Okay, the dogs come, and what happens when the dogs come? Uh, he leaves the city. He leaves the city. And Violet said he leaves the city because it was... How did you say it, Violet? That it was too what? Too scary. It was too scary for him. Okay. 
It's too, or too much. Too much. Okay, too much what? Like the city was too much for him? Okay, like it was too much. It was just too much stuff going on. Okay, and what lesson do you think that's trying to teach us? What do you think, Noah? What lesson is it trying to teach you? What do you think the author wanted you to learn? Uh, to... To let... Never take anything from anyone or anything from the environment, from their environment. Okay, kind of like Jadeen said, to not, to leave things kind of where they belong. I don't think that's too bad of a lesson, but I think there's one that makes, uh, that matches the story a little bit more. Bailey, what do you think? Don't believe what people, don't. Don't believe what people tell you. Believe what you think. Okay, maybe don't always believe what, what people tell you. Okay. Kylie, what do you think? Mm, just because you live in a city doesn't mean you get to judge another town because um, you don't like it. Okay, maybe that you don't get to judge uh, other people because... Even though he thinks that his life is better, it, it's kind of scary, right? With the dogs and everything. Bradley, what do you think? I think the moral is uh, better beans and bacon and, and peace and cakes and jellies and fear. Ooh, I like that. And I like that you use the story for that. Because in, in fables, it normally says like, the more at the very end. That's a good point. When you read a fable, usually the very end is what tells you what the lesson is. So he says, better beans and bacon in peace than cakes and steak in fear. So I think that that actually matches up with a lot of what we said, like leaving people where they're at, not judging people um, for their different, like for, for living in different places or for having a different life. He's saying that, uh, the country mouse would rather eat the food that's not as fancy, but be safe, be calm, in peace, he says, than eat the super fancy food, but always be, you know, looking around and worried, like Violet said, because it's very dangerous. Or like Jadeen said, it's just too much. There's too much, like, stuff going on. But I like your evidence. So I'm going to copy that sentence. Better bacon in peace then cakes and steak in fear that's a very good point bradley whenever we read fables usually the very end of it is what tells you what the the lesson is and i think all of us had a good way of saying it it was just a little bit different than how they said it in the story that people some people belong where they belong you shouldn't just take them and try to put them somewhere else um some of us said we shouldn't judge other people for for how they're living, that some people are more comfortable that way. Um, we had a lot of good ways to say it, I think. We'll make sure that we go ahead. Oops. Make sure we go ahead and fix our answers here on this page. And then when you finish fixing your answers here, you can go ahead and turn it in.